to all of you. Justice Ramana, former Chief Justice of India and the inspiration behind IAMC. Justice Ravindran and Justice Nageshwar Rao, former judges of the Supreme Court of India and trustees of IAMC. My colleagues, judges of the Telangana High Court, Mr. George Lim, Senior Counsel and Chairperson of SIMC, Mr. Wee Ming Chuan, CEO SIMC, Mr. Seng Wan, former Director SIMC, Mr. Gregory Vijendra, Senior Advocate, distinguished guests, members from the legal fraternity, and friends from the media. I'm indeed delighted to be present in my favorite city on the occasion of the first annual Mediation Day organized by IAMC Hyderabad to speak on a subject close to my heart, role of mediation in India's judicial system and the potential for India to become an international hub for mediation. India, as you all know, has a rich tradition of alternative dispute resolution and mediation has been an inalienable part of this tradition for centuries. However, only recently, mediation has gained the recognition that it deserves in the Indian legal system. In ancient, medieval, and even contemporary India, uh, disputes were resolved through a process which we call the panchayat system, which was a form of community mediation. In addition to panchayats, there were other ADR forums also that were practiced, including arbitration. So the use of ADR in ancient and medieval India has been quite comprehensive. For example, during the uh, 9th to the 13th centuries, the Cholas, a very powerful dynasty that ruled over southern India, had a very well-established mediation and arbitration system. The Chola kings used to appoint uh, officers to resolve disputes with the traders and merchant guilds and their decisions were considered final and binding on the parties. Use of ADR in ancient medieval India has highlighted the importance that India as a society places on resolving disputes peacefully and through consensus building. It is a tradition that has continued to this day and has strengthened by recognizing mediation as a viable means of dispute resolution in the Indian legal system. ADR, also described by many as appropriate dispute resolution, offers a basket of options to parties for resolving disputes outside of the traditional court system. And that is not to say that we can do away with the court system. The very fact that we use the word alternate goes to show that the court system will always be there. So ADR includes arbitration, negotiations, mediation, conciliation, and local dalits. And they're all different facets of ADR. There are also the hybrid modes of ARB, MED-ARB, then MED-ARB, and so many other modes. There was a time when the public was so ignorant of the word mediation that I remember they would always confuse it with meditation, a word that is phonetically similar. But with more awareness, things have changed for the better. As we know, mediation is a voluntary process in which parties attempt to resolve disagreements with the assistance of an impartial third party, who we call the mediator. Mediators do not impose a solution on the parties. Instead, they create an atmosphere where the disagreement between the parties can be resolved and dissolved amicably. The party's choice determines the mediation process. In other words, they call the shots when it comes to the process. The benefits of mediation are plenty. They include non-adversarial and the voluntary nature, flexibility and confidentiality of the process, the speed and cost effectiveness, and finally, the consensual settlement that leads to further avenues of collaboration. As a mode of ADR, mediation helps to reduce the caseload of courts and it contributes towards the financial and commercial growth of the country. At present, mediation in India can be categorized under three heads. The first one is the court referred mediation, as courts can do so under the CPC, the Civil Procedure Code. Then the private mediations, for instance, under contracts that contain the mediation clause. 
and lastly, as provided under a specific statute, take for example the MSME Act, the Commercial Courts Act, the Consumers Protection Act, and so on and so forth. So mediation services are provided by courts or tribunals known as court annex mediation centers and by private ADR or mediation centers as just pointed out by Justice Nageshwar Rao. As per the data published by the National Legal Services Authority for the year 21-22, India has 464 ADR centers, 570 mediation centers with 16,565 mediators all over the country. In this duration, nearly 53,000 cases have been settled through mediation as per that report. Various countries, including Australia, Singapore, and Italy, have stand-alone laws on mediation. This vacuum in the legislative regime is going to be filled up very soon in our country with the Ministry of Law having drafted the Mediation Bill 2021 that seeks to promote mediation, particularly institutional mediation, and provides a mechanism for enforcing mediated settlement agreements. Presently, the bill stands referred to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Personnel, Public Grievance, Law and Justice for discussion. The bill is an acknowledgement of the significance of mediation in the Indian legal system. It also seeks to establish a comprehensive framework for the mediation process, and it encourages its use as a viable option for dispute resolution. Once legislated, courts would be required to refer parties to mediation before proceeding with the case, unless there are compelling reasons for not doing so. There are several features of the bill, just to touch upon a few, the fixed timeline that it offers, the proposal to establish an Indian Mediation Council that will register the mediators and recognize mediation service providers, the fact that the mediation agreements once signed will be binding on the parties as decrees enforceable in law. There will be limited scope of challenge to a mediated uh, settlement. And the bill also contemplates called the confidentiality clause relating to discussions, documents, and information exchange in the course of mediation. The bill highlights the impartiality and independence of the mediator who ought to be accredited and trained to conduct the process effectively. And that is where the trainings will help uh, anybody who's in practice or who is outside of practice and proposes to be a domain expert to be a trained mediator. The bill contemplates a mandatory pre-litigation mediation in civil and commercial disputes. So some of the questions that have been raised about the insistence of participation in a process that is ordinarily considered voluntary in nature. Incidentally, the Niti Aayog 2021 report had observed that this model of compulsory mediation up to a few sessions has shown positive results in countries such as Italy, Brazil, and Turkey. In other countries, including in Australia and England, mediation for certain disputes is statutorily mandated, or the courts are empowered to order mediation. So the Mediation Bill 2021 provides a robust legal framework for mediation in India. It recognizes the importance of mediation in resolving disputes. It provides for a mandatory referral to mediation, ensures confidentiality, establishes defined roles of the mediators, and the cross-border disputes settled by the mediations through mediations will be recognized as awards enforceable in law. All this legal framework will go a long way in making mediation a more effective and a more efficient mode for resolving disputes in India. Talking of court annexed mediations and private mediation centers, and I emphasize it's not versus, it is and. As we have gathered here to discuss the importance of mediation in resolving disputes, I may emphasize that the need for the existence of both the court annex mediation centers and private mediation centers cannot be uh, underestimated. They must work in tandem towards a common goal of spreading the mediation culture. Court annex mediation centers settle pending litigations that are already, that are pending in courts and are referred by courts. They have played a critical role in spreading awareness of the process and promoting mediation in India as an alternative to traditional litigation. 
Besides the financial burden of engaging a mediator and arranging the venue, uh, the court annex mediation centers have made that more attractive and accessible to the public. But they also give the confidence to the litigant that courts can and are monitoring the entire process from the beginning to the end till the settlement comes back to the court or the matter is returned unsettled. Private mediation centers function at a different level as they deal with pre-litigation media disputes and can offer several advantages over court annex mediation centers. They can provide a more tailor-made approach to mediation, offer specialized services and expertise to parties seeking resolution of their disputes. They can provide more flexible schedules, allowing parties to choose the venue and the time for conducting the mediation sessions that may be more convenient to them. More importantly, encouraging private mediation centers can help to democratize the access to justice by allowing for greater competition and diversity in the mediation services. By promoting private mediation centers, individuals and organizations are empowered and equipped to take control of their disputes and choose a mediator or a mediation center that is best suited to their needs. I may hasten to add here that encouraging private mediation centers should not be viewed as a criticism of the court annexed mediation centers that have shown tremendous results over the almost two decades, past two decades. But both type of mediation centers operate in different areas, have their own strengths and are essential components of the entire dispute resolution firmament. The aim should be to create a harmonious and a collaborative relationship where one can complement the other and each can adapt best practice practices from the other. Encouraging court annexed mediation centers and promoting establishments of private mediation centers like IAMC and many others will create a robust and an inclusive mediation ecosystem that will foster effective and efficient dispute resolution. Now, just to touch upon the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on mediation, which has been, has taken this on a different track entirely. The COVID-19 pandemic had unleashed an unprecedented global, global crisis affecting all aspects of life, including the legal system. In India, just like other countries, the pandemic forced the judicial system to adapt itself and evolve to meet the challenges thrown during the lockdown. This meant harnessing artificial intelligence to conduct courts virtually, laying down mechanisms for online filing, establishing e-kiosks for easy access to those living in remote and inaccessible places. In the ADR field, one of the most significant changes has been the shift towards online dispute resolution, which we call ODR mechanism, including online mediation. So online mediation has now emerged as a preferred mode of dispute resolution, primarily attributed to the restrictions imposed recently by the pandemic on physical interaction. The transition for, to online mediation presented several challenges that required careful consideration and attention. One of the most significant challenges was to identify a reliable and secure platform to support the mediation process. Just to share with you, at that point in time, when the pandemic was on, I happened to be chairing the committee that runs the court annexed mediation center established by the Delhi High Court known as Samadhan. And I remember how we decided to place urgent orders to purchase licenses for operating virtual communication platforms to start the process. And sometime in the month, that was sometime in the month of May 2020, as you remember, the pandemic had broken in the end of March. So looking at the increased need and adaptability of all the stakeholders, 30 to 40 matters were being listed for online mediation on a daily basis at that time with one slot of one hour for each matter per day. So that is what had started, and it was a trickle that became a deluge in Samadhan over a few months. Simultaneously, we prepared guidelines for conducting the online mediation that the mediators and the parties involved could communicate effectively, confidentially, and the data protection regulations could be complied with. 
The lessons learned were robust technical support was required, comprehensive infrastructure was necessary, and clear protocol for using technology in mediation was imperative. The process of signing and sealing settlement agreements for ODR was also important to make it foolproof. In all these processes, be it physical, be it online or hybrid, let us not forget, we must recognize the importance of the human element in mediation. The mediator, whose role is critical in facilitating effective communication between the parties involved and the mediator who helps them find mutually beneficial solutions. In the case of online mediation, mediators need to adapt their skills to online environment, including building rapport and establishing trust with the parties involved, all without physical interaction. Currently, there is no specific regulations governing ODR in India, which are mandated by the statute, but ODR providers and users are relying on existing legal frameworks best practices and data protection regulations to ensure that their online mediation activities comply with the re relevant laws and regulations of the country. As ODR mechanisms continue to gain, gain traction in India, rules and guidelines are bound to come up and provide more clarity. With proper infrastructure, with proper protocols and human skills in place, it has the potential to democratize and improve the mediation experience for all stakeholders. Way forward, very briefly, the way forward for India to become a global hub for mediation is multi-pronged to my mind. It requires a concerted effort and collaboration of all stakeholders, including the government and non-government organizations, industries, PSUs, NGOs working in the field, the legal profession, the civil society organizations, and end of the day, the civil community, the end users. So my suggestions will, incre will include increased awareness. This can be achieved through workshops, through seminars, through symposiums, and outreach programs like this one organized by IAMC that target businesses, communities, and individuals. Develop a robust infrastructure. This includes a pool of trained, experienced mediators, mediation centers, and state-of-the-art facilities, a robust legal framework that supports the process. Next, encourage international participation. This can be done by partnering with international organizations that are like SIMC and incentivizing foreign parties to use the Indian mediation services. Fostering a culture of mediation, and this can be achieved by encouraging mediation in universities, in law colleges, in educational institutions, at workplaces and communities. It is essential to provide and in, to encourage mediation as a valuable tool for conflict resolution that can bring long-term benefits to all the parties concerned. Lastly, continuous improvement of the legal framework. Of course, the mediation bill is a positive step and soon it will be hopefully legislated in India, democratizing the whole process. But legal frameworks once in place will have to be constantly reviewed and revamped to remain responsive to the evolving needs of the society. To conclude, mediation is a vital tool for resolving disputes. It is a positive step towards access to justice. Through mediation, parties become partners to the solution rather than the problem. Just as it is important, the important, it is important for the judiciary at every tier to support the mediation process, it is equally important for the legal community to create a robust ecosystem around mediation. This is especially applicable to those involved in drafting contracts so that med arb clauses are incorporated as a rule rather than an exception. Time is not too far when mediation will be cherished as a viable career opportunity for students and young practitioners. This is when the true potential of mediation as a preferred choice of dispute resolution will be realized. I would therefore urge universities and law colleges to include mediation in their curriculum and impart regular trainings, which will go a long way in improving the quality of the next generation of mediators. With continued efforts and cooperation from all stakeholders, I'm sure that India's potential as an international hub for mediation can be realized, 
as long as it can offer more efficient, more cost-effective and satisfactory methods of resolving disputes. So mediation is not just a process. It is a state of mind which brings people together on a common platform and builds bridges of mutual understanding and collaboration. Thank you.